You are welcome to my channel. This is Floki's Den. Today's video is a very exciting one and we want to talk about the monies that the government of Canada gives to Canadians or PR holders, those that have families, those that are here as single parents. Yes, Canada governments are generous. Should we say they are generous? But at least they give some money. But, you know, I always say that getting money from the government sometimes is not free. There's no free money here in Canada. However, the government of Canada always looks out for ways in which they can compensate the citizens, those that live here in Canada, with some little amount of money to help with the upkeep of citizens, their children, their well-being, and general things that will make life easy for everyone to be able to live a good life here in Canada. So I'll be diving into some of the benefits that we enjoy from the government of Canada, whether from the federal and from the province. And, you know, let's just get into it, guys. joining me for the first time welcome to Floki's Den and for the purpose of this video I'm filming from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan so while I'm going to be sharing with you all the benefits or some of it in fact not all some of it of what the government of Canada gives to those that reside here in Canada it's important for you to also do more research because some provincial benefits differ from province to province meaning that you don't receive some because you're living in Saskatchewan, Alberta might be given some, um, Ontario might be given some, New Brunswick might be given some. So you want to research and find out which province um, actually gives out a particular benefit that you feel that will be beneficial to you if you are coming this way. Or even if you are residing here in Canada and you've not received some of this benefit because you don't know, this video will enlighten you and give you another opportunity to go research more about it so that you can also benefit from this benefit. Number one, I would say is the child benefit, which is the CCB. It's actually there to offset some of the expenses that we as parents spend on raising children that we have under 18 years. Don't forget that when your child is over 18 years, is an adult. So the government will not keep that. They are on their own. They start filing their taxes on their own. So this is actually benefits to cover children under 18 years of age. So if you have one, come closer and listen up. The government of Canada will be giving you a particular amount for your child under 18. And they, are also, they have also split this into some categories, which means that if you have children under 5, you get more. If you have them under 12, I think, about 12 years old, you also get more. And then as your child grows up to 18 years, it trickles down in the amount that you receive from um, the government every month. And this amount is paid monthly. So that money is for your child though. It's not for you to use and go and be splurging on yourself. So it's just for you to be able to cater for these children, to give them the very best of some other extra things that they need for their well-being. And also to cushion that amount, if you're earning low, that money will serve a good purpose. So if you're earning low, this amount is actually not a band that cuts across all the job, all the income bands. If you're low income, the government of Canada is actually helping low income earners to be able to get more money to sort one or two things out. And that's why these uh, benefits actually come in handy. So if you are earning less than 35,000 and some figures, you will be getting more for your child under 5, under 12, and then a bit up to about 18. But the amount varies. You get more at under 5 years old. I think it's actually about 500 per month for a child that is less than 5 um, years old. And that's the beauty of it. And as you earn more and as your child begins to get into other bands in the ages, this amount reduces. So, do you want to keep collecting child benefit and not increase your income? 
that's your own cup of tea. And if you come in as a new immigrant, you don't have taxes to file as of yet, but they'll be using your income from your country for the previous year. So you'll be declaring at that point what you earned within the particular time before you land in Canada. And that will be the basis in which they'll be able to calculate what your income or your child benefit will be for the next tax year. Meaning that these are calculated using the previous income tax for you, right? And they use this figure to pay you for the next tax year. Number two is the GST and the HST. That's the goods and services tax or the harmonized sales tax. So this is actually a benefit that comes to you quarterly. And this is meant to reduce what you actually pay out as taxes. I know you have heard that we all complain about the high taxes here in Canada. But government also pays a certain amount back to you know people that live here or actually stay here because they spend on goods and services tax or harmonized tax government pays this amount back it's not that much it is paid every quarter it is also determined by your previous tax income tax year and all these figures are calculated and put together and you get this amount every quarter your household income is also considered at this point because they consider you whether you are even a single parent or you know with children or you're coming as an individual or you have even you know common law partner or you're in a spousal arrangement right so this amount is looked at considering your household income before you are paid this amount and of course this amount goes to the low income earner amongst the two um, parties right number three government also recognizes that things get expensive in canada you know life gets difficult for some people because you're shopping for groceries right now grocery cost is so expensive in fact inflation is everywhere in the world i got but government of canada are also mindful of this and they now consider the citizens of canada and help them to you know, give some little amounts as rebates for all of these expenses or these high costs that come around every time and every now and then. So the government pays what they call the grocery rebate. This is not a concurrent payment. It could be a one-time payment at some point when they realize that cost of grocery has gone up or cost of fuel has gone up. You know, sometimes they pay this rebate and it's a one-time fee. We have received this at some point and sometimes too, you know, this comes, it could be another year, it could be in two years, but government is sensitive to the high cost of living in Canada and they pay us rebates for some of these um, expenses. Another benefit that I want new immigrants to also focus on is, um, you know, now housing is expensive, cost of re renting is high. And it's difficult for immigrants. I know they are meant to bring their pool of fund, and I've also screamed under my lungs and said, keep this money because you need this money for you to settle. But you know, sometimes you find immigrants that don't even have all these monies, especially when they land in Canada, they don't have these monies intact. You can always apply for the Canada housing benefit, which comes to the immigrants because of the low income that they earn or if they don't have enough to be able to support their housing needs so this is available for new immigrants and some people don't know i know that it is not an automatic application that gets approved but they look at situations and they look at so many factors before they can grant this so there's always these housing units that are open to new immigrants they give you at a very reduced amount that you pay every month and then you begin to also check back with the government based on how much you earn every month. You are filing this report. You are sharing with them your income every month. And then they determine if they can still accommodate you in these houses. As your income increases, they determine if they can keep you. And if you go above a particular amount, they tell you, guy, you have now started earning. Go and look for another house and pay that high bill. So it's just to cushion that effect for you in the initial stage of moving into Canada and you're not able to afford those high costs of renting property here in Canada. Cost of rent is high. It is too expensive and immigrants are finding it difficult. One, as an immigrant, you must have 
the capacity to pay for this rent and because you also haven't really started working it's difficult to get accommodation so this can also come as a support for you to be able to get um, this housing uh, facility but like i said it is not a guarantee it does not apply to everybody you can apply and you might not also be granted so it is also based on a case by case basis but it's important for you to know you can try it out and i know people that have tried it and they actually have these homes that they live in at maybe very low cost like 500 dollars or something and they get a two bedroom or a three bedroom apartment that they stay for as long as their income remains low so right now let's go into the provincial benefits that gets paid based on province right like i mentioned benefits are paid from province to province depends on where you are and some provinces don't pay while others pay you know or some are available in one province and they don't pay that in other province so let me start from home which is saskatchewan and there's one that is called the saskatchewan low income tax credit and this is paid on your low income bundle if you're earning less than thirty-five thousand nine hundred and two. so they pay it based on your the number of children that you have um your net income and they pay this together with the federal you know the gst tax credit that i initially mentioned so if you're earning that and you're also within the band of thirty-five thousand nine hundred and two for net income in an in a particular year then you'll be eligible for this Saskatchewan low income tax credit. Although as you move on in the band and you are earning higher, it trickles down. So it starts from there, right? Even if you are earning higher than that, you still get it. They pay it actually to the, the lower income partner of the household. So if you are the husband and the wife and the wife earns low, she gets that payment and that goes into her own bank account. So you need to understand they pay based on the child, the number of children you have, their ages. There are some categories of um, criteria that is being used to be able to pay this amount. But it's good for you to know that this is an income that comes in every quarter and is paid with the federal GST or HST that gets paid to your bank account. Right. I've lost count actually, but we're still on the provincial um, benefits right now. So we'll talk about the climate action tax credit, which is also paid to the low income earner from the parties of, you know, you have a spouse or you have a common law partner. If you file your tax together, this climate action tax credit is paid to that individual. So what's climate action tax credit? So this payment is actually to offset the amount that you use in paying for carbon tax. We all use or use um, carbon in one way or the other, whether we are using gas for our fuel, or fuel for our cars or gas for cooking or coal, whatever we use, we emit this, you know, carbon. And that's why they're trying to reduce the use of this carbon by paying this incentive. So because you would have paid this from your gas bill or your heating bill or other bills, right? So this, there's a net difference that comes in back to you based on these factors of your, you know, how many children you have. So that they used to determine how much of those carbon that you have emitted based on your family size. <laughs> so these are also criteria that government uses. I don't know how they calculate it, but it's also based on your family size, the number of children you have, their ages, and all of those factors considered. The goal is actually to reduce the use of harmful substances and then to reduce global warming eventually. So that's the aim of this carbon tax that is being charged or paid back in rebates. One thing I forgot to mention is that for the um, Saskatchewan Low Income Tax Credit and the Carbon Tax Credit, it is tax free. So you don't pay taxes on it and then you get paid every quarter based on your previous tax income tax that you have filed in the previous year so they begin to pay you um, that amount by the following year i think it starts around july they begin to calculate it every quarter and that goes into your bank account it's not much too. so if you are watching outside canada you feel ah these canadians are really hitting it hard they are just little monies they are not a lot of monies 
But you know, a little goes a long way. It can help in grocery shopping. It can help in buying gas in your car. It can help in paying one particular bill or the other. It can help in diverse ways. So at least it is helping. I know some other provinces also pay this climate action tax credit. So it's not only limited to Saskatchewan. Some other provinces pay that amount. They pay that. But what I know that Ontario pays, but you know, the names are different, is what they call the Ontario Trillion Benefit, the OTB, which comprises of three payments actually. And one of it is Ontario Energy Property Tax Credit. So they pay for the energy that is used, part of it. The Northern Ontario energy credit and the Ontario sales tax credit. So these are three in one combo and they call it the Ontario Trillium benefits, Trillium benefits. And those are paid every month actually to those in Ontario. They pay them every month and there are criteria for this as well. So government does not just dash money out there. Criteria that they look out for. But more importantly, all these benefits are low income driven. So you, when you begin to pray for more income and you have income coming in, your annual income is going into the three, six figures, then all these benefits will almost net out to, you know, very insignificant figures. And especially when you begin to have um, a child that is over 18, like when my son turned 18, we stopped receiving benefits from him you know being a child because he's now an adult so government follows all these criteria and they pay you short of that amount based on your family size your income annual income you know for the family and so many factors that you consider um you know within your household so they use that and then when you file your tax those takes effect in the following year as those benefits gets paid to you finally what i will say that everybody receives which you know you receive what's called a tax refund and tax refund is not also an automatic refund it is also based on the deductions that has gone on in your pay stop like you've deducted some of the federal and provincial taxes that are meant to go to the government you know <laughs> i say government this money is go around. They collect it from your income. They pay you back in other ways. So it's still our money. And these monies get deducted. So if you, your company has deducted enough taxes from you or they deduct less taxes, the government looks at it vis-a-vis -vis all these criteria and they refund some amount to you. Sometimes companies deduct less taxes. The government tells you, you are owing us money. You have to refund money to us. If your company has deducted more than, and some other things actually that go around those deductions, then the government feels or deems it fit to refund some money back to you, and then they credit your account with a particular amount that we all call tax credit, or the government calls tax credit, and we're excited when we receive this money. Nobody wants to return money to government. But when you file your taxes, and you see that government will pay you some money, no matter how small, whether 500, 1,000, some gets 5,000, 2,000. It depends on so many things, your income, your taxes that you've paid over that particular year from those incomes, and the remittances, everything looked at by the government and they decide whether you're owing them or the government will be refunding back to you. So this is, in a nutshell, some of the taxes that we receive from the government and i know people that are not in canada say government gives money government gives money yes government does but i look at it in a way and say that this is still our money so it is what we have earned that has been deducted and then goes back to some other people that's why i see that some other people some people actually don't want to leave a particular band because the more you earn you are actually servicing the low income People because you pay more in taxes and it goes to you know the benefits that accrue to those that are low income and then when you earn less of course your taxes reduce what they deduct from you reduces and you get more benefits from the government that those that are earning high don't even get or receive from the government so it is still our money 
it is still our money but at least it goes round in some ways that comes back to us so we appreciate the government for all these benefits sometimes or some sometime last year or two years ago as well when the cost of fuel was going up we received from the saskatchewan government insurance a one-time fee for each motor vehicle that has been insured under them so these are also one-time things or payments when the government realizes that some things are expensive or the economy is getting hard or we are spending so much on a particular commodity at least the government is mindful when they realize that some sectors of the economy are are really going high and people are finding it difficult to you know pay these amounts maybe insurance fees are going up grocery fees are going up house you know rentals are going up then they bring up some of these one-time payments it's just one time yes it might not be a lot but at least it's the consideration that matters and then we fill that in to be able to sort other expenses that are also waiting to take up that amount so we are appreciative of the government of canada for all these benefits that gets back to us even though it's still our money but we still thank you that at least we are seeing our money come back to us part of it though however it's still one thing to be grateful for so if you are coming this way know that there are benefits that you need to see the opportunity some come to you automatically some come to you by actually going after them so if you don't go after them you don't get them finally i think this is finally i know there's also the health benefits that you also get um, to sign up for if you are a low income earner that you have opportunity to also get prescription drugs for very low amount some like two dollars or three dollars depends on how your file gets approved so if you have a medication that and you feel that your income cannot afford to pay for that you can apply for the low income health benefit and apart from what you enjoy from your health card you also enjoy that benefit and i think every every six months or so they send you a mail that you need to also declare your current status are you able to afford it are you still low income or do you still feel you can't afford to pay this from the current income that you earn then it gets reviewed again and decision is made you get to know whether you still continue to enjoy that low um, payment based on your prescription drugs or you pay out of pocket so guys we know that healthcare is not totally free sometimes you pay out of pocket if you don't have insurance covered from your workplace and all your health card actually has a maximum or you know a limit to its coverage so it is not exhaustive on its own that's why when you have a full-time employment that covers your benefits in fact i clap for you because you have so many things covered on that for your health care so seize the opportunity and look forward to all of this I'm going to be putting all of this in a package this is free information that i'm giving to you if you don't know but when i put it in my ebook that i'm going to be bringing out shortly i will be charging you guys so please seize that opportunity i'm going to put all this in in a particular format that helps new immigrants understand what they need to benefit amongst the newcomer steps that they need to take when they land here in canada so if this video has been helpful please share to as many that you feel will also find benefit in it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel continue to watch give your comments in the comment section are there other things that you want me to share i'll put them all in the comment section and i'll be responding to you or even put it in another video that you can watch thank you so much for following my new subscribers thank you so much see you again in my next vlog Bye guys!